Hi, my name is Alex with ATEC Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about users, groups, people, teams, and shared teams. It's a lot to cover, so make sure you stick around and watch the entire video. Drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And lastly, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that I cover in this video, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about are just users. So users are typically handled by a site administrator. This is usually somebody that has almost all the power in the world within Jira, and this is basically adding users to Jira. And so to get to the users, you come through the settings, you come to user management. The users are essentially the people that actually have access to Jira. This is the first step. This is where everybody comes in. And this is the very, very first acceptance, if you will, because if somebody is not a user in your Jira, if they're not a listed user here, then they don't even get access to Jira at all. So this fundamentally at a core is step one, because somebody must first be given a Jira license in order for them to even be able to use anything within Jira. So that's a user, okay? So it's basically uh, a user is gonna be somebody that your company has agreed to pay a license to and they can now have access to, they have the ability to have access to Jira. So that's the user. Next are groups. Now groups are just a way to organize users. You can create like buckets, if you will, and put specific people in specific a group. So essentially if you have a developer team A, developer team B, you can put and organize the folks into those groups. From a licensing perspective, there is something in play. There is something you can manage from a, from a licensing perspective, but just from an overall organizational perspective, the groups is gonna be a good, easy way for you to just, again, keep track of who belongs where. That way, if you're doing build backs in your department, or if you're just trying to make life easier as an admin, you can, essentially identify what group folks belong to, again, mainly for billing purposes. Otherwise, the groups also help power other things within Jira. For example, you can share filters to a group. You can share your dashboards to a group. You can give access to a project to a group. But where things get tricky is these names here are not common knowledge. They're not, I should say, they're not public knowledge. So other people in your organization might not know these names. So these names are really just for the administrators. So if you have a strong Jira administrative team in your company, the groups are gonna be awesome because it'll really, really help you organize your folks. But it's, the downfall is your project managers, your scrum masters, they're just not gonna know what these group names are. And so it's gonna be a little bit more tricky for them to really leverage and utilize these groups. Unless they know the groups, then, and then it's really a good thing. Now, so those are the users and those are the groups. So now let's go and start talking about people. So people happens to occur within the project. So if you go to any specific project and you go to the project settings, you will now have people. Now these are the folks that get access to the Jira project. Now, again, not Jira as a whole, but just, just this project, nothing else. And so when you add somebody here, when you add a person here, notice you can add a name, which is essentially a user, or you can add that group. Now remember, if you aren't the Jira administrator and you aren't privileged to know the name of those groups, you really can't leverage that group here because you're just not gonna know that inside information, if you will. So putting somebody's name is probably gonna be the only way. Now the only downfall here is if you add somebody's name, you may not know if they have a license or not. So if they don't have a license, then effectively you can add anybody's name here if they have access to Jira, but if they have no license to Jira, different thing, then they'll they'll show up and you'll be able to add them. But when you try to assign something to them or when that individual tries to actually access Jira, they're gonna be greeted with the message that says they're not licensed. So you have to make sure that the user has a license. Now, typically here, the project admin or the scrum master is gonna have the project admin power. They're gonna be able to add users. They're just not gonna know and have that privilege to see if they have a license or to see the groups. So this is kind of okay. This is kind of a, uh, it's a powerful way to add users, but you gotta make sure you set yourself up in your organization so that this stuff actually is useful. 
So that's the people section. This is essentially how we add folks to a project. And now I'm going to talk about the two other ways of managing users. Now I'm going to talk about the useless way, at least for now. This is something that I recommend you ignore at all costs for now. I know that Atlassian is eventually building it out and that they have bigger plans for this, but for right now, it causes more confusion than anything else. And so I want to direct you over to the people section. Big disclaimer, be very, very careful with this. Okay. You can create teams here and you can basically call it like the A team, right? And just have like the best team in the world and you can add people to your team. When you do this, nothing really happens. You can essentially, as the name here says, you can at mention the team and you can collaborate together and you can work more effectively together, but there isn't anything within Jira that actually allows you to reference this team in a in an effective way. You can mention them, which is fine, but most of the time, most folks are trying to create like a team so that they can assign work to an entire team or organize all the issues in Jira and kind of give them to a team. And this way, using this team here under people, it doesn't do anything effective. Okay, There's just no way of um, actually doing anything fun with it. So you can't actually reference this team that you've created anywhere, at least not today. At least not that I know of, right? And and the reason I bring this up is because there is actually a Teams field. So if I come down to Screens and I come and essentially just add the field Teams, which I'm going to do really quickly. Oops, it's already in here. You see how I have Team in here? When I go to Jira and I try to reference that Team, let me make sure I'm in the right project. I don't want to go to the wrong one. And so if I come in here and I open up an issue, and I come and reference a team, you remember that I just made a that A team, you'll notice that it doesn't show up. I have demo team, team A and team B, but not a dash team that I just created. And that's because that team and under people is not the same thing as the team field. And so this team, you see how it just doesn't align. And so if you want to take advantage of that team field, then you need to upgrade yourself to the premium version of Jira, and you will have something called a shared teams. And here, you will be able to create teams by clicking this button up here, and you can see that I already have demo team, team A, team B. So when you create a team here, a shared team, that's when you now get to be able to use that, that field of team, and it will have those values. So that's the only way to do this effectively, but unfortunately, you do need to be on the premium version of Jira to take full advantage of that. So I just wanna let you know that. Now there is a third or sixth team. This is strictly for Ops Genie, not in topic for this discussion. This is more for Jira service management, but there is another team to just confuse things even more. And if you're a Jira service management user and you're using Ops Genie, you'll notice that there's a team over there. And just very quickly for everybody watching, that team is to help with managing alerts. And again, independent of everything else here, you can't reference that team over here. And so they just, you just have so many different teams. And I just wanted to create a quick video to kind of explain to you how do you manage people in general, right? Whether you put them into a team, a shared team, or you put them into a group, or you just call out people explicitly just by their name and a, as a user. Those are the different ways that you can essentially manage your users. So hopefully you found value out of that. Hopefully it clarifies some of the confusion. I know I've had a lot of people go, what the heck is the difference between team, teams, uh, people, groups, it's just, it's all very confusing. So hopefully this video helped break it down for you. If you got any value out of this video, please drop a like. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And finally, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if something's still not clear, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks and have a great day.